That's the other great way to care for the earth, and it's to grow your own vegetables. Oh, okay. And I'm, guys, I'm so excited about this interview. <laughs> I've, they've been listening to me talk about this all week. I'm so excited to finally bring this to you guys. We're with um, kind of a local celebrity here today. Uh, you guys know that I love to garden, and a couple weeks ago, um, I was looking around for some tips, and I came across a New York Times article from Craig, and he is the North Carolina tomato man. He has successfully mastered how to successfully garden in North Carolina. So this is really exciting. And today, Craig is going to share those tips with us specific to our region, and that's important to note here. Craig, you are joining us live now from Hendersonville, and we are so glad you're here. Thank you. Oh, thank you all so much. This is such a treat to, it's, it's Earth Day, right? What a better thing to be talking <laughs> right. gardening on a day like this. Exactly. And Craig, let's first talk about what the environmental benefit is to not only having your own garden at home, but also growing your own food. Oh my garden, my goodness, there's so many. And I was thinking about this last night lying in bed as I was uh, finishing up the New York Times Wordle, which I love to do every day. <laughs> um, the first thing that comes to mind is reducing carbon footprint by all of the shipping of those vegetables and fruits that, that come into the grocery stores from all over the world. And related to that is reduction of the work of underpaid pickers. So you're doing good things for the environment and people. Um, you're improving your own little patch of yard or, or treating that soil with respect. You're creating this haven for bees and birds and butterflies because they're under threat in so many different ways. And I think finally, when you think about bringing all this produce back from, from the store, you've got all this packaging, this plastic. We go down in our basement and find one of the 63 quarts of tomatoes we can in a glass jar that we reuse every year after we clean it. So just countless benefits to the world we live in, plus the fringe benefit of you having this, the bird songs as your soundtrack all summer long as you're out there attending your garden. And we know, of course, that there's a lot of different tomatoes, and tomatoes are your expertise, so we have to know. And we've got a couple different kind of climate regions <laughs> here in this area. So we forecast for the Piedmont, for the foothills, and for the mountains. What's the best tomato variety for each of those locations? Well, here's the, here's the great news is that North Carolina throughout is just one of the optimum places in the entire country to grow tomatoes because we have a long growing season. Everything grows well here. So it becomes a, a matter of understanding that to grow the largest tomatoes, the big one pound and greater, they really suffer when it's really hot for long stretches and very humid. And I remember when we lived in Raleigh just before we moved, I was measuring temperature for about 10 years. We had 70 days at 90 or above. Mm -hmm. So those big favorite heirlooms that people love were having a lot of trouble setting fruit. The pollen doesn't work well in that heat. So maybe stick to the more medium-sized tomatoes in the hottest regions. In the cooler regions, really pick anything, but pay attention to whether it's early, mid, or late season, and look at the extent of your growing season from frost date to frost date, uh, the last frost to the first frost, and you can really squeeze pretty much everything in. I am particularly par uh, partial to Cherokee Purple. Uh, that is an heirloom that I actually got to name back in 1990. It came to me with no name, and I've grown that successfully in Raleigh, and I've grown it successfully in Hendersonville. So it will thrive everywhere in between. So don't get too fussed on the particular variety. Pick something you like, the color you like, and just really pay attention to your, the dates that you can, as early as you can get them into the ground and avoid those huge mortgage lifter type tomatoes if you're in a region that gets super hot and uh, it will just cook them right on the vine. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> tried to do the mortgage lifter this year and already I've been unsuccessful. Um, so the reason though that I called Craig a local celebrity is because I haven't even met him, but I feel like I know him so well. He does Instagram lives, there's Zoom classes, blogs, and this book, I mean, this book is absolutely beautiful. You guys have to take a look at this uh, during the commercial break, by the way. And this this book is available lots of places. The photos are amazing in here. The layout is wonderful if you're a first time gardener and the information here is just uh, indispensable. And um, I'm kind of a newer gardener, so I really find that this is really important. So Craig, I have to ask, what is the most important tip or the most important section for kind of new gardeners mm -hmm. in this book that you could find? Oh gosh, the whole book. No, it, it, is, it, it, is, it is the cultural parts where it talks about seed starting if you're interested in, in starting your own seeds because there are some critical success factors. But really, the most important thing I can say is 
live with your garden and understand your plants. The people who have the greatest luck are in their garden all the time because they don't just they don't just make a list at the beginning of the year and then adhere to it week by week because as you know Jacqueline weather changes all the time you can read your plants you can look at the color of the foliage and find out if it's hungry or not um, the other thing is don't get so focused on the end result because what you'll find is it's everything that happens in between that brings you the most joy. It's those days out gardening when the birds are singing all around you. Yeah, you're getting pretty warm and sweaty, but you get something out of it at the end, which is those delicious tomatoes. And don't bite off too much at the very beginning. If you're a new gardener, ease in slowly, because most of the gardeners that I've seen withdraw from it have just bitten off too much they haven't figured in their vacations and their trips, mm -hmm. and they end up with a weed patch or the deer have eaten all over their, mm. <laughs> you know, their treasured garden. Things can go wrong. Um, I've been gardening 40 years, and I have great seasons, and I have terrible seasons, and I have seasons in between. So it's not a reflection of your skill. It's a reflection of how we really need to understand how weather and climate impacts what we grow. And if you can do that, you'll really find a hobby that will become one of your best friends for your entire life. Craig, it's been a pleasure to hear from you. Thank you for joining us. And for folks at home, you can find more information about Craig and check out his courses, all of his offerings, as well as this book by visiting the website on your screen. And you want to make sure to give him a follow on social media, too. He goes live on Instagram with tomato gardening tips you need to know, and I've joined them. They're amazing. Uh, tomorrow morning at 745, you can tell I have too many questions for Craig, right? <laughs> so he's joining us again, and we're going to talk more about what he mentioned earlier, those heirloom seeds, what that means, oh. and how you can get involved. Awesome. Yeah.